This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. It caters to so many different interests like illustration, graphic design, photography, and many more. Most of you guys probably already know that I also post classes on mostly my food illustration paintings on Skillshare along with other things like basics or beginner's guide to watercolors. My most recent class is on this blueberry soft serve ice cream. I get a lot of you guys asking me to post food illustration tutorials and Skillshare is where you can find them. This is because my food illustration tend to be more detailed and more tightly painted than my usual YouTube tutorials and with Skillshare I'm able to divide the steps into shorter lessons so it's much easier to digest the information when classes are more structured and this way I can also go into more detail with my explanations for each step. At the same time, because of this structure, you're going to be able to work around your schedule better because it's very easy to go back to the next step or the lesson that you're up to if you had to take a break or a few days in between. As you guys know, Skillshare also offers so many different watercolor classes along with many many more subjects that you might be interested in. So if this sounds like something you want to try out, you can go to the link in my description box where the first 1000 of my subscribers will have access to a month of free membership trial where you can have access to all the classes Skillshare has to offer. Thank you again Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'm going to be doodling seashells. These are fairly easy, it's just a lot of play with colors and you can actually paint it freehand. But I'll just go through the drawing process first because I'll also be outlining mine prior to painting. The main seashells that I'm going to paint are simple clamshells which we can play around with the colors more since the surface is fairly flat. So for this, I like to start out by making a curved line for the top, then continued with one side to be rounder than the other side to curve in more, and curve outwards slightly before joining at the tail. So the right and the left side is not equal. You can also play with the size of the clamshells as well as varying the size, so you can flatten or curve the shapes more if you'd like. The one that I'm drawing out now is more of a scallop shell. I'm using the same method where I draw the top then join the left and the right side at the bottom but this time they're even all around. Then I also add the little sections at the bottom of both sides. Once I'm done then I add the wavy curves on top following the curve of the shell then draw lines directed to the bottom tip. I personally enjoy painting the clamshells more though because it's much simpler and opens up more opportunity to play with colors so you can skip this for your final painting as well if you choose to do so but if you want to play more with doodles and drawing this one is a fun one to draw. For extra elements, I'm also going to add starfish. For this, I like to draw five lines first as the skeleton of the star shape. Then I just draw an outline surrounding those lines to create those thin and long starfish. And I just find that this method is much easier to get the equal sides and the equal arms. You can also use this method for a fatter type of starfish by creating curves closer to each tip of the line, but because we are not following the lines as closely, I would usually still need to adjust a few things to get the shapes correct. So this one is a bit trickier to draw in my opinion. Next, I'm going to draw sea urchin shells. I'm going to keep this simple by drawing somewhat of a circle that's imperfect in shape and I also draw another jagged imperfect circle in the middle. I'm going to follow this up with lines going radially towards the center, then finish this off with little circles to represent where the pointy stingers are. So I'm going to place this in all of the little sections that we created with the lines. For whatever space I have left, I'm also going to paint some small coral reefs which I treat quite similarly to how I draw branches but I'd use thicker lines for this as I paint later and that's basically it for all of the elements. Before we start painting, I'm just going to show you all the colors I use for this painting. Firstly, I have Potter's Pink by Winsor & Newton, Moon Glow by Daniel Smith, Manganese Violet by Roman Schmal, Azure Blue by White Knights, Burnt Sienna by Holbein, and for the base color of all of the shells, I'm going to use Buff Titanium by Daniel Smith. I'm also going to use Paints Grey Bluish by Schmincke that I still have on my palette, and as for the extra textures and decorative elements, I'm going to use my White Jelly Roll pen, 
and also my fine tech gold palette. I've drawn the layout for mine, so I'm going to go straight to painting. I'm starting with buff titanium as the base color. I'm putting in a medium consistency, then I'm going to add water to the top area. For this first one, I want the clam to have pink as the accent color, so I'm going to use potter's pink to paint the edge and some light curvy lines near the top edge using whatever was left of the paint from the top. Using a bit of water, I'm going to pull the rest of the color downward, so I'm going to wet that area. And while I wait for that section to slightly dry off, not completely, just for the paint to settle, I'm just going to add extra details for the top using Potter's Pink. And for the bottom, I'm going to use a mixture of manganese violet with burnt sienna, so the bottom looks a bit pinkish but it's much more muted. Then I'm just going to add extra details to fix in some of the lines and make the tip a bit darker using more potter's pink. I'm going to use the same method for this next one. I am starting with a buff titanium as the base color, then I'm going to chase this one up with a bit of manganese violet instead of the potter's pink this time. I'm applying the color to the top of the clam and creating the same curved design. For the bottom end, because I want it to be a bit darker, this time I mix the manganese violet with a bit of moon glow to increase the value. Then I'm just going to layer on more paint if I feel like I need the color to be a bit more vibrant, just like for this tip, or if I want to add extra detail, I'll just add the little curves. As you can see, because the buff titanium is nice and light and is fairly neutral in tone, it wouldn't create such a weird combination when it's mixed with so many different hues, which is why I like to use this color as a base. So for this third one, I'm using the same buff titanium as my base, and this time I'm going to use burnt sienna as the accent color, but instead of just using these two hues, I'm also going to add a bit of the previous mixture, which is the manganese violet and moon glow for the bottom of the clamshell, then spread a thin consistency so it combines slightly with the buff titanium. Hopefully from here you can see the main method that I'm doing to paint these clamshells. So I'm starting with buff titanium again for this clamshell with a hue as the accent color and I'm going to make the bottom and the top curve at the edge a bit darker in value for the rest. So for this particular clamshell, I'm going to use blue as my accent color after the buff titanium. So I'm going to use azure blue as the accent color. This color is fairly bright, so I'm going to use a thin consistency, and to darken it, I'm going to mix azure blue with a bit of paints gray bluish. And for the bottom end, I'm just going to use paints gray bluish by itself because I want the top edge to be a bit more saturated with a brighter hue compared to the bottom to just be slightly darker and muted in tone. Here I'm adding additional details with the paints gray bluish as little tiny lines, but this is completely optional since we are still going to layer on more details after I'm done with all the base color. Moving on to the next one, I'm going to be a bit more experimental, so I'm starting with thin consistency buff titanium, then I'm going to use burnt sienna for the edge of this shell. Then instead of continuing with buff titanium again, I'm going to use a thin consistency of the previous blue mixture. Then follow this up with Potter's Pink right at the bottom and then Buff Titanium and then I'm also going to add a bit of the previous purple mixture in a very thin consistency. But because I'm layering this in a very thin consistency, the paint is not going to muddy up too much and from there you can start to layer on a bit more pigment and see how it turns out. So I didn't end up liking the purple as much. So I ended up just layering on more buff titanium and as for the bottom, I added a very thick consistency of Potter's Pink, which is a granulating paint. And I really like the effect for the clamshell because I feel like it adds more of a natural texture. And because it's a transparent color and it's not dark enough, I also added a very thick consistency of burnt sienna right at the bottom. 
For the last clamshell, I'm going to combine purple and blue together. So after the buff titanium, I'm going to use a purple mix of manganese violet with moon glow and follow this up with buff titanium. And right at the bottom, I'm going to use paints gray bluish. Then I'm just going to soften all the three colors until they meet in the middle. Just like the other clamshells, I'm going to paint and blend the colors roughly by following the curvature of the shell. And as for the top, I wanted the purple to be a bit deeper instead of muted so I added paints grey bluish with the previous purple mix to darken the edge then soften the rest with a clean damp brush. For this next one I was trying to attempt to paint a scallop shell but I didn't like it in the end since I haven't really figured out what I wanted to do so you can skip this or just paint another clamshell for this one but in case you want to include this in your painting as well for this I used buff titanium for the whole shell and for the edges I used potter's pink because I just want to keep the colors very simple for this one I had a thick consistency loaded on my brush and for the top I used the tip of my brush and I keep quite a bit of contact between the brush and paper and I move my brush up and down creating the curvy lines while the colors naturally blend with each other while they're still fairly wet and as for the lines I first pulled the colors from the top to the bottom directing each line to the bottom center but later found that the colors were a bit too light and close together so I ended up using a thicker consistency of buff titanium to layer on more paint and I also spaced out the lines further this time as for the bottom, I'm going to add more potter's pink, then soften the blend with a clean damp brush. Next, I'm going to be painting the starfish, and for this, I'm going to use a mixture of azure blue, paint gray, and on the sides, I'm also going to add a bit of the purple mix from a little bit of moon glow and the manganese violet. I'm going to paint most of the starfish blue but I like to just add a bit of purple here and there as extra accents and also just for added interest to the color. I think you know by now that I just like to mix up colors for this type of doodles and for this one I tried a different color mixture but I didn't end up liking it. So the colors I used for this one is manganese violet, buff titanium and potter's pink. And when it dries, it ended up looking like flesh and it was kind of gross. So I am going to fix this later by adding a bit of blue and just um, glazing it to make the color a bit brighter and less flesh-like. But I'm just going to leave that to dry for now and fix it later on. Moving on to the sea urchin now, I'm going to use a color combination that I know works already, which is buff titanium, azure blue, and also a bit of paints gray. I first use a very thin consistency to cover the area and just have a wet surface. Then I use the thicker consistency of the same colors separately, and I'm just going to let it naturally blend together. For the next sea urchin shell, I'm going to try to combine all the hues together for the base color. I feel safer doing that for this one instead of the starfish because the donut shape will help separate the colors instead of them blending together too much. And once I'm done with the medium to thin consistency of the base color to just have a nice wet surface, then I'm going to add on a thicker consistency paint using mostly azure blue and paints gray. The colors might look a bit muddy and yucky for now but as it dries it will blend together more and settle and create a nice pastel mix. For the little snail shells, I think that's what they are, I'm just going to keep it very simple. So for both of them, I'm just going to color in the surface with buff titanium. And going back to the first one, I'm going to use potter's pink from the center outwards. And for the next one, I'm going to use azure blue and apply it the same way. So I've completed painting the base colors and now I'm going to add textures and details to all the shells and starfishes and for this I'm basically going to use the same hues that I use for that particular shell and I'm going to use my small brush to add textures such as lines and tiny dots as additional design for the shells. I'm going to keep it simple by just doing the curved lines and dots but you can also add other designs for fun if you would like.
I like to play around with the consistency, so as you can see for the top part of the shells, I like using a dry brush texture to give it a simple detail through the rough textures. Then for the lines, I like to mostly use a thin consistency depending on how sharp I want the lines to look against the shell. If you'd like, you can also add ink pen doodles on these shells for a different style of doodle. For this particular shell, because I have several hues, I am still going to do the same thing, but I'm going to follow the consistency. So for the blues and the colors underneath, I'm just going to follow through by using a thin consistency of the same hue so it doesn't overpower the colors. I'm also going to add dots to exaggerate the texture that the potter's paint created and I just dot it around using a bit of burnt sienna. I'm just going to keep adding the little signs and textures for the clamshells and I'll get back to you when we're ready to paint on the details for the rest of the elements. Next, I'm going to paint the sea urchins. For this, I'm going to use my darkest color, which is Paints Grey Bluish for the center. And for this next one, I'm going to use Moon Glow and Paints Grey Bluish in a thick consistency for the dark hole. Moving on to the non-problematic starfish. Again, I'm going to just use the same hues as before. For this, I use Azure Blue mixed with Paints Grey. And I'm also going to use Manganese Violet to paint the dots. I like to place them around randomly and also play with the size to keep the textures looking natural. On the next starfish, I'm going to use Moon Glow to paint the lines in the middle and I'm also going to paint dots around. I still wasn't sure at this point and I'm still trying to salvage this starfish so I came to the decision of adding Azure Blue as a glaze to the lightest area and then I'm also going to paint some blue dots while the surface is still fairly wet. It still looks kind of gross for now but as it dries, it will settle and the colors will look a bit nicer. For the spiral shell, I'm just going to use brown to line the spiral and redefine it. And for this blue one, I'm using a mixture of brown and a bit of blue. I'm going to layer on lines on top of the sea urchin that I previously painted. And for this, I used a mixture of paints gray bluish with azure blue. And I'm just going to play with the line weight as well as the spacing between the lines. I just want to make sure that all the lines are facing the center. As you can see, there is still a lot of space left on my page, so I'm just going to doodle on a few coral reefs freehand, and you can use any colors that you have on your palette for this. So after this, I'm going to add splatters and for the splatters, you can use whatever color you have or whatever color you use on your page to make it nice and cohesive. And of course, I'm also going to add larger dots to give the composition some extra dynamic. Now here comes the decorative part. I'm just going to use my white jelly roll pen to add dots to the sea urchin shells. And I'm also going to add additional details for any of the elements that I feel like. This is the doodling part where you can just add anything you'd like. I'm also going to use my Fine Tech Gold palette to add circles and also little dots and specks on the shells for extra accents.
There are a few shells which I feel need extra redefinition and for this I just use my sepia micron pen and again you can also use any ink pen to add additional doodles at the stage and customize to your liking. This is probably my favorite part of the painting which is to add gold. So firstly I'm just going to scatter some circles around the composition and after this I'm also going to add little specks of gold on some of the shells and I really love the little shimmer it gives to the composition. Lastly, this is sort of like a last decision making thing. I decided to add a bit of shadows by using a mixture of Moon Glow and Paints Grey Bluish because I felt like the composition looks a bit flat, but this is completely optional, this is just my personal preference. So for this, I started with a medium consistency of the mixture and I place it around all of the elements and then soften it with a clean damp brush to create the soft transition between the white of the paper and also the shadow. Then after this, I'm going to add the shadows for all the elements, including the coral reefs as well. And after this, I'm going to go over some of the shadows again, especially parts closer to the elements of the shells with a thicker consistency of the same mixture just to give it an extra definition and also a bit more contrast and value. And that's pretty much it for this painting. Despite the mistakes I made in this painting, I think I somewhat salvaged it at the end. I don't think the starfish looks as gross now. But yeah, that's what doodles are. It's just experimenting and play with colors. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not, but you can always try to fix it along the way. And that's pretty much it. Like usual, all the tools I used for this painting as well as my social media links will be in the description box. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!